uh, today I would like to talk about some maybe new technology for most of our customer called Kubernetes, right? And uh, I'm mainly responsible for FSI sector, so I can see more and more uh, people is using uh, uh, virtualization from physical server to uh, virtual platform. And now the generation is going to move to Kubernetes world. So maybe uh, you heard about a virtual bank, right? And then most of the virtual bank are trying to develop their new application on top of Kubernetes workload. So uh, we have to think about that. So uh, same as virtualization platform, you have to consider how to back up your Kubernetes workload as well. So uh, today I'm going to share how you can do backup on uh, Kubernetes workload and also uh, using our tools to protect your uh, workload as well. So I, I just share some uh, information with you guys. Uh, uh, when you uh, want to purchase a new product, you, you mainly may, may watch about the Ghana report, right? So uh, on the Kubernetes world, we, we share about the uh, uh, GigaHum report. So you can see that uh, the orange uh, pointer, and then you can see this is our performer. K10 is uh, the product from Wim. Uh, which is used to back up your Kubernetes workload natively. So we can natively work with the Kubernetes, Kubernetes platform and then back up the uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes data from uh, your infrastructure. So you can see uh, where is uh, Kasten. Kasten is closer to the uh, center of the circle. You can see that uh, this is a full uh, portfolio uh, to back up your existing data from Kubernetes as well. So just share about uh, something like uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation for you guys. This is the foundation that uh, uh, some of the backup vendor would like to join, but not all, all of us will join. But uh, Wim Kasten is the only vendor who joined this uh, as a platinum member. What it means to, uh, is that we spend a lot of effort we spend a lot of effort to develop our, uh, our ecosystem on Kubernetes world, especially just like Wim, uh, when you use this uh, different kind of uh, uh, storage on your existing infrastructure, and then you move to Kubernetes world, how you can integrate your backup solution with your existing backup soft, uh, uh, your, with your existing uh, storage system. This kind of uh, uh, committee is to develop the special need of uh, storage, and then we can integrate with this different kind of storage for your backup purpose. This is a uh, uh, CNCF committee. And then uh, just to share some information, most of you may have heard about WIM, but uh, not all of you heard about Kasten. We have acquired this company last year, and then we try to do some combination uh, with this product to protect more than virtual platform, but Kubernetes platform. You can see uh, a multiple workload, you can see uh, a multiple environment, we can back up on-premises environment, and we can also back up the public cloud environment as well. Uh, for case turn, we mainly focus on Kubernetes workload, and that is expert on backing up the Kubernetes workload as well. Different kind of service, just like Wim, we can do application aware. How about uh, when you move the workload from your on-premises environment to your container environment or cloud environment? Is it possible to do application aware as well? So uh, K10 provide uh, flexibility for you guys to protect your backup data. And then lastly, the same uh, as Wim, so we, we don't have uh, any uh, vendor lock-in strategy. So you can choose whatever storage platform you like. You can choose whatever uh, uh, hardware you like, and then you deploy our software to protect your backup data. So just share some information with you guys. Uh, what is the customers looking for uh, to protect their uh, backup data? You can see. In Kubernetes world, they have to back up and recovery their data. They have to do some application mobility, just like what you did in the virtualization platform. And then you can, you should also consider something like disaster recovery strategy on your existing architecture. So uh, these three perspectives that 
K10 can also help you to handle this kind of uh, operation. And then some multiple or hybrid cloud environment, more and more people is now going to deploy their hybrid cloud environment at this moment. Some of them are using on-premises data center, and then some of the workload is, is already moving to cloud. So hybrid environment should be some of the uh, infrastructure they, 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 they are trying to deploy, and then uh, also some role-based control as well. So uh, Kasten is the platform that is a unique platform as an application-centric data management. What kind of uh, application-centric they are using? They are mainly uh, uh, focusing on that of friendly operation. We, we offer a user-friendly interface with you guys, and then you can just uh, uh, hire someone and then use this kind of user-friendly interface, uh, learn maybe one or two days, and then you can do your backup job manually or automatically with our GUI. But uh, mainly, for uh, at this moment, mainly the Kubernetes workload is focusing on some development, so maybe uh, the developer will use this kind of platform to develop their own application. So uh, how our backup software can integrate with uh, uh, or or can work with the developer to help them to make the development more more fast or something like that. So we are also uh, we I, I will show some demo later on to uh, show you how we can do that of friendly operation on our backup software. And uh, this is kind of uh, the the GUI that you can see. So it is kind of easy, just just like Wim as well. So we we always focus on some easy operation. Okay. So you can see the uh, operation GUI is sort of simple. And then when you use K10 platform to back up your Kubernetes workload. We don't have to install any agent on top of that. We just install the K10 software on that. And then we can do automatic uh, application discovery. So every single component from your uh, Kubernetes workload, we can discover it easily. You can define your backup uh, strategy just like uh, what you did before, the uh, backup schedule, et cetera. And then uh, user-friendly interface and end-to-end -end security. More and more people is focusing on how you can maybe uh, so your backup software should be encrypted. Uh, we can do encryption natively. So uh, you can see uh, we are focused on the complete application. Uh, it's not like uh, the previous uh, VM backup. We, we, are, we are not going to back up the worker nook on your, on your Kubernetes environment. We are focusing on the whole application, uh, the archi overall architecture. For example, your uh, stateful set, your deployment set, your secret, your persistent volume. This all kind of this component within the Kubernetes environment, you should be back up uh, maybe as a whole image. So you can, we can just uh, automatically discover them and then backing, back up them as well. And then for restoration as well, we can also restore it as well. So, you can see that uh, the data services uh, uh, the K10 can handle. You can see different kind of uh, uh, database application like uh, MySQL, like Cassandra, like maybe you're using public cloud services, the Amazon RDS services. We can also back up this all kind of this uh, data services. What if they are not appear here? Uh, maybe. Uh, can K10 also back it up? So you can also uh, find it from our website. Uh, we are already developed more and more uh, script to uh, backing up this kind of uh, application as well. So you can see the distribution. Uh, the main distribution may be on public cloud or private cloud. We can also support. Uh, for example, like uh, Red Hat OpenShift, like uh, Amazon Platform, like uh, Azure Platform, we can back it up all the all the uh, uh, infrastructure there. And then we can also, just I have mentioned before, uh, the st uh, storage infrastructure. We can leverage this all kind of different kind of uh, storage infrastructure to take snapshot and then uh, back it up. So uh, some solution detail here. Uh, you can just install our platform here, a K10 platform, and then uh, 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 back up your existing uh, data on top of your Kubernetes uh, environment. 
and then you can also use some application blueprint to take your uh, uh, data services snapshot, back it up. Uh, main use, use case is just like that, uh, backup restore, backup recovery, uh, we can do backup recovery, and also we can clone your Kubernetes environment very fast and uh, with our technology. And more than that, we can do migration. If you are moving from uh, AWS environment to Azure environment, we can just back up and restore to uh, Azure environment as well. Or even you can move to on-premises environment as well. So um, just to uh, spend some time to show you the interface here. Because uh, we have kind of uh, user-friendly interface, you can see that uh, we can discover the application. When you install the K10 there, we can already discover uh, all of the application, which is your namespace there. Okay, so, and then you can uh, see the policy, you can see the backup data there, and uh, all kind of the operation we can already uh, handle there. And then when you click it to the uh, uh, policy, you can see, uh, click it to the application, you can see we, can, we have already discovered different kind of uh, uh, application there. And then you can see that every single detail we have already captured, it, like the uh, data, workload, networking, configuration, there. So uh, uh, it is very user friendly for you guys to, you don't, you don't have to think about what kind of thing that I have to back up. You can just back it up all and then define your backup policy as well. So uh, here you can see the backup policy and then the backup data and this dashboard you can uh, scroll down and then you can see the activity that we are, we are doing as well. So you, uh, it is kind of simple. So when you uh, click to the uh, policy, we can can also define your uh, own policy as well. You can see the backup status, all single kind of uh, information that you can see there, uh, the duration, what kind of uh, data that you have backup also included in this single dashboard. Okay, and then when you click it to the backup policy, you can see the, you can create your own backup policy. But before that, we should uh, see what kind of the thing that we have to backup. Right, so you can see it, uh, in the, your Kubernetes environment. This is on Cloud EKS, and then uh, you can see my SQL code there, right? And it's running, and then uh, we can get the uh, PVC uh, persistent volume information, port information, and all kind of information there. And then uh, you can see there's persistent volume. They have uh, a different kind of port there, surface warning there, deployment warning there, and also replication warning there. So uh, this is to show you that uh, we, we, uh, this is the uh, original environment that we would like to back it up. So back to our backup software, what kind of the thing that we can back up? We can just define your backup policy. Uh, you can make the snapshot there and then you can uh, do import operation as well. So uh, the snapshot, you can see this is hourly snapshot, or if you want to do it uh, so, uh, frequent, more frequently, you can define your, your snapshot frequency as well, and the snapshot uh, retention as well. So just like your uh, previous uh, uh, packup policy on Vim. So uh, you can also, uh, uh, enable the backup through uh, snapshot export. What is the snapshot export is using is mainly for migration. When you're moving from uh, Azure to AWS, you can export your backup application, backup data to, uh, to uh, something like object storage, and then you can uh, mount it back on other cloud platform as well. So you can see it here, and then uh, for the retention for this uh, snapshot application, and you can also define your own uh, your own uh, uh, retention for that. And then you can also select your uh, application by name or by label. So uh, you can uh, mainly, if uh, people is using Kubernetes platform, they are using label as well. Because uh, uh, for future application, when you tag your application, you can also include it in this backup policy as well, just like my when you add new MySQL, so this, it is already uh, included in this uh, 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 my uh, backup policy as well. So there's future application protection for you guys, and also you can uh, uh, come to 
the uh, resources, filtering, something like that. Uh, if you don't want to back up some of the component there, you can just add a filter there and, and you select your own uh, or create your own backup policy for that. Okay. And then uh, you can see a YAML button there. All kind of this operation from the GUI, we can generate the YAML script there because we are natively integrated with, uh, we are natively integrated with your uh, existing uh, Kubernetes platform. So this kind of operation that we, we can use to, uh, for your operator or generate for your operator. So they are familiarized with this kind of script so we can also create this kind of uh, backup policy. Because time is up, I'm, I'm going to uh, the next section. Uh, just give you a quick summary on that. We can do backup recovery, we can do application mobility. When you back it up and then you can move to uh, another uh, cloud platform or on-premises as well, we can do the SaaS recovery orchestrator that is really easy to use and to end security. You can en enable your encryption as well and then which ecosystem, whatever the storage you are using, if they, they have CSI integration, we can do, use it as your, the snapshot as well. So come to the last slide, uh, WIM and uh, uh, K10 uh, is already combined and then we do some integration as well. So it is kind of the whole portfolio that we can back it up. So virtual platform, cloud platform and also Kubernetes platform. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you.